It's here! Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. Yup, that one got listed, but before we get into them, we need to talk about a couple of snafus. Last week, the mod collection completely sold out, so we saw a new banner. And what's kind of cool about this is it is the only time that Gibson has ever publicly posted what time that they actually do their release. But on launch day... Uh, their mod collection was missing from the main page because it sold out. Obviously, they wanted to promote something else until the other ones came in there. But if you came here looking for that, as you normally do, to find the new listings, it was not there. That's why it's good to have this page just bookmarked so you don't get blocked out. But when all these new listings came into being, they didn't have time to update their new page yet. So you can find a weird combination of this, where it says it's sold out, but everything's still there. But if you were to have visited it 10 minutes after upload, they fixed everything. So just a couple of few fun snafus. It's fun to document that. Now let's get into the fun. Starting with Frosty Sparkle. Okay. How much was it? It was 6000 Could I have bought it? Yes, but I decided nah, I didn't want it at that price. It is kind of cool, though. It's got a slight white burst outline to it, and then the rest is like a really sparkly silver and blue. The stark white plastics really pop. It's got a blindingly white back. And that's not just pure alpine white. It does say it has a sparkle back and sides too. So maybe that one's a little bit more special in person because it just looks like flat white in these photos. It's kind of like that pink butterfly Ultima Les Paul custom that had the white back and a hot pink top and face a headstock. You wouldn't think it would look good by its description, but it actually pulls it off. But what's going on with this middle pickup here? Apparently that's just a regular P90. That just looks bigger than normal. But if you were wanting this one, I'm sorry, that thing sold fast. We're talking within a minute of it uploading. Next up, a 59 reissue 335 in Hollyberry Shimmer. It's got a nice dark fretboard and a sparkly red finish. It would look great next to a Christmas tree. But at 6600, I'm not sure it's going to find an owner by that time. And to continue on that theme, they were trying to do a whole bunch of ornaments. This one was Holiday Ornament Blast on an Explorer Custom 5600. All right, so we've got some sort of like a very nice jade color top. This looks fantastic. I love it. But then look at the back. <laughs> That's awesome. It's a metallic red. Green top, sparkly red back. I would imagine this might have a metallic sheen to it as well. That's a cool Christmas color Explorer custom. I feel like we could have done with like a green Gibson logo or something festive up here. Put a little Christmas tree on the truss rod cover. This one was similar to, but not exactly the same as that 335. It's called Yule Sparkle and oh man, it almost looks like it's 3D. Cause you got like the green and red sparkle over top of the, the sparkly red top. Yeah, that is in your face. But then the back is just this really pale mahogany and then we've got a stinger? But you'll notice it's not a normal stinger. We have a volute back here. It's like the reissue style volutes that Gibson did in like the mid 2010s that don't look exactly right. It's billed as a standard 60s, but the standard 60s does not have a volute with a mahogany neck. So I was fully expecting to think that this was like a 10 year old guitar, but no, serial number dates to 2022, pretty late. Is this a new model in the works? Like an early 70s Les Paul standard maybe? Because they had volutes, they had multi-piece mahogany necks, not exactly like this, but it's got the Schaller style tuners that they're more so a late 70s, 80s thing. I guess now that I look right here, that might be a filled in screw hole. I mean, you can see another one right there. It's just not visible on all of them. It's got real mother of pearl inlays. That's not what you normally find is typically the acrylic stuff. Is that an ebony fretboard? Hard to tell. It's almost like it has a Les Paul Moderns fretboard, the body of the 60s standard, and then like some old neck. Yeah, we're gonna have to keep an eye on that because that's a freak. Next up, another one of the incorrectly labeled 70s flying Vs that we've been seeing over the past month. This time it's called Bronze Fog. Still got the rainbow truss rod cover. It's bronze and metallic. It's got the P94 pickups. They're not my favorite, but they've been selling. But those are the old 2013 flying Vs. Royal Blueberry Sparkle is the name of our next one. It's kind of like the ornaments, but a little bit dialed down. This is a very classy looking Les Paul. But then they turn it back up to 11 with our headstock being matching. That's a pretty nice classic, especially with the matching back. But to follow that up, we've got a standard 50s. It was just called Graphite Jazz. I'll be honest with you guys, I did not even realize what they did here. Do you? There's no bridge pickup. It's a rap tail that they threw one of the intonatable ones on. And, uh... It's, it's just a neck pickup. 
and it's all blacked out. It's it's so strange, but I like it at the same time. I probably prefer a bursted flame top just to give it some extra flair. It's probably similar to my signature guitar one that we talked about in this episode where they got a body that wasn't like completely routed or something. It's either that or they just filled it in and filled in the other knobs, but it is a current day production serial number. It was unique, I'll give it that. And now the one for the lefties this week was Rose Brilliance. Definitely gets you in the mood for summer, not necessarily Christmas, but I like this. I would love to see a limited edition run called like Summer of Love or something and have all these exotic finishes, you know, similar to this. Oh, nice. They did it on the neck. They just decided to go for the solid pink metallic and then they did the back. Ooh, 4,600. Let's see, did it sell? It did not. It's cool though. But you gotta remember, there's not a million lefties out there. But check out this tribute. It's quite elegant, isn't it? All blacked out. You've got a gold border to mimic binding. Then pair all this cosmetic glory with our very nice streaky rosewood fretboard and you get a winning combination. And if that wasn't enough, you get a gold stinger on the back. And it's a full gloss finish, which means they had to have refinished the whole thing. And they gave you a hard shell case. That's one time I would say one of the refinished tributes is actually a fair value. And now we've got this. So it's the same issue as last week. We saw a Les Paul Custom get listed as a 1960 Les Paul Standard reissue. The way I imagine this works for Gibson is they have these product codes that just automatically generate the titles rather than them typing it out. So I'm betting they have an error right there when they're trying to say it's a Les Paul Custom, it's coming out as this. Because this is not a 1960 Les Paul reissue. But looking at the bridge, you can tell it's a Nashville style, but we've got a mahogany top. Usually you only get the mahogany top on the 57 reissue custom. Systems, but those guys have an ABR1 bridge. So unfortunately, I can't even tell you what this is unless they routed out the ABR1 to put traditional posts in it. But it's a nice natural back. We've got a trapeze tailpiece, witch hat knobs, added P94 pickup in the middle. Apparently it's a satin refinish. Whatever it is, it's not that. But speaking of not that, here's an SG standard. And if you blinked, you missed this because I think this was the second guitar to sell this week. The first one was that custom and then this one because I was thinking ah, th this is cool enough. So this is another bass conversion where they took it from one of the SG standard basses and just made it a six string guitar, you know, like the Fender Bass 6. But it looks like we got a Firebird pickup in the middle, a mini humbucker in the bridge, a random single coil. <laughs> <laughs> in the neck. I love it. And you got the nice streaky fretboard. I would not agree with this choice as how close those knobs are together, but it is what it is. But the headstock was nice and professionally done. I like the choice of tuners, brass truss rod cover. The back of the headstock looks a little bit strange, not gonna lie, but it was a model with a volute and I think it's just the paint looking strange. But the rest of it looks okay. And here's the thing. It was only 2400. Now you might say, oh, that's that's crazy for one of those SG bases. Yes, but the last time we saw them do a base six conversion, if I remember correctly, they wanted like six grand for it. So I don't think they meant to list it that cheap. I think it just got listed as an SG standard. As you can tell, I tried to buy it, but by the time I realized it, it was actually a thing, I was too late. And now we're starting to get into the evil Santa vibes. I know last year we had the elf blood custom. Now we've got Crimson Dusk Burst Satin. Basically, it's one of those access customs that we see every single week in the Bengal Burst, but they sprayed a black border on it and dirtied it up with a black overlay, but it works. Oh, and it's a satin finish, which is actually a good thing on these access models. Open pore satin even. Hmm, not so sure about that, but... <laughs> <laughs> Those silly guys tried to stamp mod on the Apex head carve. That's strange seeing that without the Gibson custom logo under it. But look at this beauty, Cherry Dogwood Standard 50s. Looks like a Vibramate Bigsby, so you could remove it if you wanted to. You even have the spoiler on it to make it real easy to do the restringing. You've got the golden toppers on your pickup rings. Looks like even a brass pick guard. This is blinged out and whoa. So this must have been a cherry guitar that they took the finish off of and then just like sprayed some black over top of it. I like that. I'd like to see that become a current production thing, but you got brass back plates back here and you can see some of the staining effects still in our serial number. It's kind of similar to what the Gibson did on the Voodoo series. Whoever thought of that one, fantastic job. But brace yourselves for this one, a 57 Les Paul special for $5,200 in a space rust finish. So we almost have like a Firebird X looking thing here, but I think they were trying to go for like a planet that has rings around it. 
Then we got our toaster pastry P90 pickup set up. ABR1 bridge, but no stop bar tailpiece. This is like what they use on the EDS 1275. But then they put one of these Maestro Vibrola plates on it just for good measure. It's not actually a Vibrola. Got silver reflector knobs with a headstock looking like this. And yes, space was correct because our serial number is floating away <laughs> off center. We've got the open back Waverly tuners. They stole your cool custom shop case, gave it a Gibson USA, and the full back looks like this. I'm not surprised it hasn't sold. I'm betting that will sit around for quite some time. But this thing, there's no way it's still available. SG reissue is what they called it. This aged gold with this dark evil hue with the kind of aged looking inlays, only a brass tendon cover. It just looks awesome. Now, in my opinion, they kind of ruined it on the back with the white back plate. Darn, they stole your case again, but at least it's one of the older Gibson cases. Even if it is the Gibson gear style, it's back when cases were really nice. But yes, I was right. That one's gone. And then finally, a Les Paul Modern. Probably started as the sparkling burgundy finish. They just sprayed a black border on it, which makes it look so good. Put a P94 in the neck position, uncovered our bridge pickup, gave it the voodoo style knobs. They've done this all before, but this was a nice touch right there. And they just left the back natural. And now time for the lightning round. There's a Les Paul Studio done up in Pelham Blue. It was a complete refinish with interesting pickup covers. A J45 standard in forest stripes. A satin heritage cherry Les Paul classic. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's got the heel carve back here. That must be an older one. Confirmed. And lastly, a non-reverse bass. Whew, that was a lot of guitars this week. Almost all of them fantastic in one way or another. Now let's check out the demo shop. As far as amps go, we had a 4x12 cabinet that looked pretty nice. A 2x12, another Mark 525 head, a Thiel front ported compact cabinet, the Bass Prodigy 4. And then we had a couple of gold tops that were all blacked out. So normally you have cream, but these ones were the evil counterparts. This J185, I appreciated from a woodworking standpoint. First off, let's talk inlays. I've never seen that inlay exactly like this used on a Gibson before. But it looks like what they did is they took a Gibson Doves inlays, the split parallelogram. I think the 345 also uses them. But instead of doubling them up, they singled them up. <laughs> I don't think I'd want that on too many guitars, but I'm glad it exists. But no, the back on this one, it's a two-piece walnut, which you can find on like the Generation series. But then look at this, a three-piece neck, you've got two pieces maple, then you have your center walnut stripe, and then on your headstock only, you have paler pieces of maple. So it's just got some cool stuff going on here. But look at this headstock, give you a second. Now look at this photo. Does anybody else get a weird distortion effect looking at this? It's almost like they took this photo with a fish-eyed lens because it like bows out strangely. Another one for the lefties, there is an SG standard that they decided that they're going to add a double pick guard on again. But instead of the complete double pick guard, they halved it. That doesn't look half bad, although I think I'd rather just have the pick guard not be cut away in this area. I'd like to see more of that. It's about time we evolve the SG again. You remember, when they first came out, it was just a half guard like this. Then we got the bat wing guard. Should we now introduce the swoop? Comment down below, swoop, if you agree. There's one of those old Les Paul classics for 1900. It's funny. These used to be 14 to $1,800 guitar used. But when the 50 standard P90 came out, and those were like 2,500 bucks brand new at that time, it bumped the value of all these other ones because it's a very similar alternative, pretty much built the exact same way. So as you can see by other people's asking prices, not too surprising that it sold for 19. So now the EU side of things. I would say they actually sold more than the USA side this week because they're just pumping out all the stuff. Here's the highlights. I saw this Les Paul Supreme. I got really excited. 3,000 bucks. I was getting ready to call up the Fellowship of Acoustics. I bought a couple of guitars from them now that I feel like if I ask them nicely, they might help me get one of these. So I used to not like this Les Paul Supreme version because the whole point of having a Supreme is having the cool Super 400 inlays. But this one was a Guitar of the Week exclusive that had no inlays. Apparently, it's also a figured ebony fretboard. But then when I got to the back of this one and saw, wow, somebody really gigged that. You don't normally find that on a Supreme. <laughs> You've got a giant piece of binding missing up here. 
That is definitely the most played I think I've ever seen a Supreme. This had to have been on loan to an artist where they just got to gig it wherever they wanted. And I can tell there's a fret nib gap happening. And that's so annoying, but it's something you have to live with in the late 90s and 2000s era Gibsons. But looking at things like this is kind of humbling at the same time because we look at vintage guitars today, you know, 50s through the 80s or whatever you want to consider true vintage. At least me, who joined this market probably about 10 years ago, have a certain way that we think about everything and the way it should look. But all these mint condition things that we're buying today, you know, in 30, 40 years, will we'll probably start to actually look like this. Have the all yellowed over binding, have nicks and dings. It's fun to watch them age. But they had a Blueberry 335. There was a 58 standard Dirty Lemon. I thought it had a pretty interesting top, non-conventional. A black Les Paul Custom, but the reason I wanted to share this one with you is because A, it was used, but how long was it used? That's a 2014. A good eight years plus. The standard just had a particularly fantastic top. Like, say whatever you want about the end of the Henry J era. They might have these weird, really wide headstocks that I'm pretty sure they only put on there to make the historics look better so you would upgrade and spend more money. But sometimes you can find some stellar tops, but they were very expensive. There was a 57 Junior in what they called oxblood finish. You don't see it in any of these photos, it just looks black. But then, if you go scrolling far enough, you can kind of see the light red tint, because that's what oxblood is on a finish of a guitar, is it is so black, but if you get it in the light, it turns a light reddish hue. So you don't find Juniors in that color too often. Another 58 reissue, but as I was scrolling through all these as I do to pick out the best ones, I see this and it's like, wow. That's a great back. Incredible figuring on that one. But I think it's really just the aniline dyes, ultra heavy staining job that makes this one so cool. Very candy cane striped. Here was an SG standard from the late Henry J era. It got beat up while being out on the road with a signed artist for Gibson, is, is what I'm assuming. But look at that, wow. <laughs> Somebody's got a huge belt buckle yet. Look at all these dings, how is he doing that? Maybe a, a studded belt or something? That's kinda cool. Here's another one for the lefties. And then I didn't even realize this model was a thing. They called it an ES-335 base. I'm familiar with the vintage EB-2s, but actually seeing it called a 335 base, other than just trying to simplify it so people understand it, I didn't realize this was a thing, but apparently Memphis was making those back in 2013. And I think that is a good spot to end here. Thank you, Troglodytes, for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.